Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Now today I'm gonna to be talking about all of the common problems on the BMW E65 series. Now let's get into it. Okay then, so here we have my 2008 BMW E65 series and it is to be noted that this is the LCI variant. So this is the facelift model and some of the common problems are different between the LCI and the pre-LCI. But then again, some of the common problems on the pre-facelift are still there on the facelift as well. So the first common problem then, and this is going to be if yours is a pre-2006 model, and this is with the MPM module. So I'm gonna show you exactly where it will be located. So it is in the trunk. So if you lift up the floor, and then it is actually underneath the spare wheel well you can see we have a styrofoam section there if you lift that up you should see two modules you should see an mpm which is the micro power module and then you should see the pdc module the parking distance control module now what can happen is water can get down inside of here and end up flooding both of these modules now if it floods your PDC module, then all that will happen is you won't have the use of parking sensors. But if it floods your micro power module, then you will have a lot more issues. And one of those issues is that you may notice the complete failure of the iDrive system. So if you find out that your iDrive system is completely down and you can't you know, go into your settings, you can't listen to the radio or anything like that, then there's a good chance that your micro power module in the trunk has been flooded so it's well worth checking that if yours is a pre-2006 model now i did also mention the pdc module in the trunk now that is the parking distance control module now if you do notice that none of your parking sensors appear to be working then there is a good chance that that has flooded it's a very very common issue that's on the pre-lci and the lci cars as well now there's a few little indications that you know that has failed. You'll notice that you won't have um, any of the colouring come on the screen. You won't have any beeps of any kind, and you may have this flashing light just here. Now, if you have the colouring on the screen and you do have beeps, but let's say, for example, it is kind of incomplete, like one section is not coloured in or whatever, then that is more than likely just a sensor that has failed. But if you notice that you're not, you're, that you're not having any um, any like indication that you are close to an object, then there's a good chance that it is the module itself. Now the next common problem in the BMW E60, and this is gonna be more common in the pre-2006 models again, and it's actually with the iDrive system. So if you take a look here, this is actually the CIC iDrive. It's pretty rare to get it in the uh, BMW E60, but previous to this, there was CCC iDrive system, and it's kind of where the menu was uh, kind of for different arrows and you had to sort of scroll across and it's a completely different um, system to this. There was just a, like a scroll wheel. So if you have that and yours is pre-2006, then the uh, disc unit, the CCC uh, disc unit with the DVD drive and everything, there was an issue with those overheating. So if you have iDrive failure, it is worth updating the uh, DVD drive to a post 2006 model because they were uh, rectified and uh, seemed to suffer with less issues. So we're in the rear of the car now then and the next current problem is to do with the diversity antenna which is located just along the headliner there. To access it you need to remove the C-pillar trim and then you can pop down the headliner and it runs just along here. Now, if that fails, you'll know about it because you should lose all signal to your radio. And you'll also notice that when it comes to locking and unlocking your car with the key fob, that you'll have to get very, very close to the car. So if you notice that you are having to stand right next to the car to lock or unlock it, then there's a good chance that your diversity antenna has failed. Now, you should be able to lock and unlock your car from, say, 
you know, 50, 100, 150 feet away without too many issues. Okay, so we are in the engine bay now then, and we're not gonna be talking about any engine problems. Now, obviously different engines have different common problems, but we are gonna be talking about this sensor just here. Now, if you are wondering what this sensor is, it is an AUC sensor. Now, essentially what this does is reads the air for any toxins, any gases, or any bad smells that you do not want to enter the cabin. Now this is used for when you have the automatic recirculation mode on, which on the climate panel is this button just here. So if this sensor has failed, it will not be able to read the air accordingly, and you may potentially be getting bad toxic smells and gases into your cabin. Another common problem then is with the cup holders. So there is a couple of ways that these can fail. So sometimes if you press the button, they can not pop out as they are supposed to. They can just end up sticking in. And uh, as you can see, mine are working perfectly. But another way how they can fail as well is the fronts actually break off of the, you know, the cup holder part. I don't know how people, you know, break these so easily, um, but apparently so and um, yeah it's definitely worth checking that both of your cup holders are working as they should you know if you are thinking of buying one of these cars another issue is with the m sport steering wheels now you'll know if it is an m sport steering wheel because you'll have an m sport badge just there and it is to do with the wearing points now pretty much every single steering wheel that i have seen every single m sport steering wheel that i have seen has these wear points on so it's on both sides and i really don't know how how that happens i mean i'm guessing people are kind of gripping the steering wheel like this and they keep rubbing it off because this is quite kind of like a soft material and i can see why it would come off easily um, but this is something that i do want to get replaced it's it's around 60 or 70 pounds which is close to a hundred dollars to replace just this lower trim piece here um, but it is quite unsightly and it does ruin the look of your steering wheel. So yeah, definitely a thing to look out for. Another pretty common problem then is with the footwells getting wet. So both in the driver's side and in the passenger side as well. And the cause for this is actually in the engine bay. So beneath the cabin air filter boxes, so you have one on each side, there is in fact a drain which should drain the water down into the front wheel arches but what tends to happen is leaves end up getting down inside of here leaves and dirt and whatever else end up getting down inside of here and blocking up those drains and then because it can't drain water anymore the water ends up getting stopped up and rises and then and then eventually breaks through the seal through the firewall so if you do notice that you have a puddle below either one of your cabin air filter boxes definitely remove the drains clean them out and get that water flowing because you do not want that going through to your footwells another issue that seems to affect pretty much all bmw e60s is the headlights fogging up or allowing moisture in now it's pretty simple why this is the case to be honest now there is a seal between the lens cap and the rest of the headlight itself now essentially the seal just breaks down and fails and allows moisture in that's why your that's why your headlights will fog up now there really is no official repair kit although you can you know remove the lens from the headlight itself and try to you know reseal it but the real fix to be honest is to replace your headlights but you know, if this is something that is not really an issue for you or it's not something that really bothers you, then I wouldn't even worry about it. Another common problem then, and it's something that I've actually experienced with BMW E60s in the past, and it's with the wiper mechanism. So this wiper here is absolutely fine, but this wiper, the larger of the two, it actually starts to come away from the mechanism. Now, essentially you have to imagine this is on a shaft 
and there is ball bearings in there essentially now the bearings can wear and they can end up coming out so you en you end up with a wiper that is actually loose on top of the mechanism now if you're not lucky and you don't catch it in time you can actually end up with your wiper arm blowing off of your car and losing it down the road so it's worth periodically checking that your wiper arm is physically secured on your mechanism now we're back in the trunk again and that is because there is another common problem in here so if we take a look under the floor again and we're not actually going to be able to show you but way back there there is actually a positive cable which runs round to the battery which is over there and there is actually a recall for that connection and possibly to replace the entire cable and so it is well worth checking with your local bmw dealer to make sure that your car has had that recall done because if not then there is a potential fire hazard there it is known for some cars to literally burn to the ground so make sure you check to see if your car has had that recall done the next problem then is to do with cars that have a sunroof so if you do not have a sunroof you haven't got to worry about this but it is again to do with various water drains so essentially your sunroof will have two drains one on either side and they run down through the roof down the rear quarters of the car and end up beneath the rear wheel arches again if these are stopped up with leaves and whatever else they can cause water to rise and you'll actually notice because you'll end up with water on or underneath your rear seats so if you notice that you have water on or underneath your rear seat bench then there's a good chance that those drains are blocked up so you may have to remove your rear wheel arch liners and then remove those drains and give them a good clean out so we're back inside of the car now and this next problem is to do with electric seats that have the extendable thigh support so let me show you how this should look you see how it is extending properly and it should retract properly as well now if you try the switch on the side and this thing is not moving then i know what the issue is essentially there is a small plastic cog which fails and it fails for a good reason really it fails that cog fails to protect the rest of the mechanism but that plastic cog needs to be replaced so it can actually function as it should be now you can actually buy an upgraded brass cog which obviously can never fail because it's brass and it's much harder wearing and whatever and uh, that's something that's that's worth doing it's not too difficult all you need to do is remove the uh, the end part uh, disassemble the motor and, uh, and then replace that cog and uh, yeah you should be good to go but that is a common issue so if you have this uh, problem yourself consider um, you know getting the uh, upgraded kit for it and the final common problem then and I guess this is not really just a BMW E60 thing this is kind of a cars in general thing but it is going to be transmission failure now BMW wrongly say that the transmissions in their cars are guaranteed for lifetime not guaranteed for lifetime they are good for lifetime you know they don't need to be serviced and yeah you just keep driving them forever and they'll last forever now this of course we know is not the case these transmissions need to be serviced i would recommend changing the transmission fluids on your automatic transmission every 60 to 80,000 miles and it's worth changing out the pan which generally includes the filter as well and uh, doing the mechatronic sleeves the bridge seal and the plug connector at the same time you know it's not that expensive to do the whole lot um, but it's worth doing to ensure that your transmission is going to last generally the people that have the most issues with their transmission uh, are the people that don't service and maintain them so if you do want your transmission to last definitely service it and this also goes for the guys who have a manual transmission as well it's even easier to service a manual transmission it's essentially like an oil change you know there's no filter or anything you'd literally just need to drain the oil and refill it again 
and um, yeah again I'd recommend doing it this every 60 to 80 thousand miles I've done it in this car it made the uh, shifts so much uh, smoother and uh, a much more enjoyable drive at, at the end of it but yeah that's pretty much it to be honest this has been all of the common problems on the BMW E60 5 series I hope this video has been helpful I hope you guys have enjoyed it please give this video a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you have not already done so and i will see you all in that next one peace